Hey, what's up everybody? It's Scott at Scott Doty TV. Thank you so much for checking in today. This is the place to be if you're a parent who wants to give your kids every opportunity to succeed. And I'm your coach. I'm gonna make sure that I equip you to make that happen. And so today, I invite you to nerd, nerd out, out with me about numbers, specifically prime numbers. I have noticed that for my tutors who work with kids in grades three and five and seven, that they're being taught in the school at that age prime numbers. And the funny thing is when I work with high schoolers and college age students on their SAT prep or even into pre-calculus, calculus and so forth, they need prime numbers for that work too. Turns out prime numbers are really important, fundamental to math and used at various ages. And a lot of people don't understand them. So today I'm just gonna briefly tell you about them and importantly, I'm gonna give you a couple of tools to help your kids memorize all the prime numbers between zero and 100. So what do we know about prime numbers? First of all, a prime number is a number greater than one that has only itself and one as factors. It's a very important definition. Notice that the smallest prime number is two because by definition, a prime number is greater than one. That means there are no negative prime numbers. Zero is not prime and one is not prime. The first prime is two. Two is also the only prime number that is even because of course, all subsequent even numbers are divisible by two, so they're not prime. All other prime numbers are odd. Now, what we know is that prime numbers were first explored back in ancient Greece by Euclid. There's evidence to suggest that it was explored, that they were explored even before that in ancient Egypt. But one thing, for one, whether it's one or the other, the point is we know that prime numbers have been interesting and important to mankind for thousands of years. In fact, even up to the present day, we use prime numbers as the centerpiece of cryptography. It's the, in other words, the study and use of codes, numerical codes, for the sake of securing your bank account, your Amazon account. Everything you use in your life uses codes that that are, that are based on prime numbers. So the point is for thousands of years and even up to the modern day, prime numbers have shown themselves to be immensely useful to humanity. I also quickly, before I get into my lesson about how to learn them between zero and 100, I'll also mention another interesting number, which is our kind of number called an anti-prime. In fact, Plato found in ancient Greece that he said that his favorite number was an anti-prime, meaning a number that has a great number of divisors. 5,040. That was Plato's favorite number because it was really anti-prime, meaning it had a ton of numbers that could divide evenly into it. Specifically, there are 60 numbers that divide into the number 5,040. And Plato thought that was pretty neat. You could use that number 5,040 to, to divide all of humanity into special groups for the sake of governing. So that was an interesting historical fact about primes and anti-primes and both continue to inform the kind of work we do in public policy and politics, economics, and international security even today. Now, our students in school at various ages, as I've said, and even on standardized tests, need to know their prime numbers, they need to understand them. So here's how I teach my students for test prep their, their prime numbers up to 100. First, the smallest prime number is, as we've said, two. It's the only even prime number. Between 0 and 100, there are 25 prime numbers. 25. One of them is even, it's the number 2, and 24 of them are odd. Now, we're going to list them off. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47. 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, 97. Delightful. So beautiful. Uh, another way I teach my students to learn those numbers is to remember which numbers in between zero and 100 are not prime. We actually spend more time memorizing those because if they can step away from those landmines and go, oh, that's not prime, I want to say it is, but it's not, then chances are good that they'll guess their way into the correct answer otherwise. The six numbers between zero and 100 that people often think are prime but are not are the following. One, because by definition, as we said, one is not prime, all prime numbers are greater than one. 39, that's three times 13. 51, that's three times 17. 57, that's three times 19. 87, that's three times 29, and 91, that's seven times 13. So you teach your student, listen, there are 25 numbers between zero and 100 that are prime. One of them is even, 
the other all are all odd. And these certain ones, 1, 39, 51, 57, 87, 91, are not prime. Chances are pretty good that your son or daughter will be able to guess his or her way to the right answer with that all in mind. There you go. That's my opportunity today to share with you a little nerdiness. Thank you for nerding out with me about prime numbers. A little bit of history and a little bit of how to help your students to learn what prime numbers are and to memorize what they are between zero and 100, which will go to their benefit in school and on standardized tests. Well, thank you so much for checking in today. I hope you found that fun and interesting. Please do me a favor, copy up at the top there the URL, pop it into your Facebook feed, put it into an email to send to a bunch of friends, and let them know, hey, this guy Scott's a nerd and I like it. Thank you in advance for doing that. And thank you again for checking in at Scott Jody TV, the place to be to hook it up for your kids so they can crush it in school. It's been my pleasure. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time on Nerd Out and on Scott Doty TV. Ciao.